document. And one day I'll find the perfect word. And once a human guy will re read those words and say, of course, I'm a bitch screaming for help. Let's put him on a fighting ship. Sure. I mean, I kidding myself. I've got a chance, have I Yes, you've got a chance. It's about the same chance as putting this letter in a bottle and dropping it in the ocean. Chance, damn it. Still a chance. I wish to hell you'd never seen that task force. Well, I've got to go down to my hypochondriacs. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Roberts. Oh, morning, Dougie. Jeez, it's even hotter up here than it is down in that mess hall. Look at that cruddy island. Smell it. Just like a hog's nest. Think we'll get out of here today, sir? I don't know, Dougie. We've got one, LC one LCC coming by. Hey, are they starting to get up yet? Starting to stumble around down there. Poor sunstroke bastards. Mr. Roberts, when are you going to the captain and ask him to give this crew a liberty? Dowdy, the last time I asked him was last night. What'd he say? He said no. <laughs> we gotta get these guys ashore. You're going to eat your hat. I'm going to type that up for me. Oh, you later, yes, sir. All right, you guys, let's go. Finish your coffee and get up on deck. Yes. <laughs> 
should have taken a long time and not shower. <laughs> Don't you do it, honey. You take your own sweet time. What about wash basin? Taking a shampoo. Take that bathroom off. That sure is a stupid damn way to take a shampoo. Hey, hey, she's coming over by the window. Oh, you're running. Oh. She's got there. That's a birthmark. <laughs> birthmark? Yeah, what do you think it is? Why, that's paint. She's gotten some red paint. Paint? I'm telling you, that's a birthmark. Did you ever see a birthmark down there? My uncle had a birthmark down there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she put her bathrobe on. They both look exactly alike, the bathrobe on. <laughs> Maybe they're twins. Yeah, but that's my dad on the right. One of the red birthmarks. You stupid jerk who wants the birthmarks on the left. The hell she is. The hell she ain't. Huh? Oh. <laughs> oh, they're both in the bathroom together. Oh, there ain't no one in there anymore. You figure that one out all by yourself? <laughs> come on, girl, let's go. Yeah, come on. Eat that snack. They must think we've got nothing better to do than to stand here. Glasses are getting heavy. Let's take turns, okay? Um, Ben, you take it first. I don't trust that bus. Daddy, call a boat for me. I'm going ashore. What are you going to do? I just 
you got a new angle? Are you going over the captain's head? No, I'm going around his end, I hope. Hey, get the letter. Here's a letter, Mr. Roberts. I typed it up. Just like your John Henry here, and I'll take it into the captain. Then hold your ear. Mr. Roberts. Oh, it's only you, Mr. Fulton. What are you doing in Mr. Roberts' locker? Dolan, I know there's a shoebox in there, but I can't find it. They stole in that shoebox. There's nothing to stop that now. They broke it right in the sink of the man's own locker. Ain't Mr. Roberts back from the island yet? No. Well, when he gets back, can you have him sign this? What is it? What is it? It's the best down line of Mr. Roberts rib yet. It's gonna blow the old man through the overhead. And then big shots in Washington, they're gonna drop their drawers too. And the letter's liable to get them transferred. Let me see it. Get along the last part right there. Where? Right there. Increased disharmony aboard this ship. Ain't that gonna frost the old man's knockers? Ooh, I can't wait to jab that baby in the old man's face. Mr. Polk, you know how the old man gets sick to his stomach when he gets really mad at Mr. Roberts? When I deliver that letter, I'm gonna bring along a waste basket. <laughs> Let me know when Mr. Roberts gets back. So, 
I'll make a backwash so big it'll lift him off the throne and throw him clean across the room. Well, I thought of that I thought about that for a half hour just yesterday. Half an hour. Yes, a half hour just yesterday. Frank, there's only one thing in your entire life you thought about for half an hour. <laughs> oh, oh, and whatever happened to your idea of putting um, marbles in the captain's overhead so they'd roll around at night and keep them away? Now you've done it. Now you've gone too far. What does this look like to you? It's five marbles. I've got in my pocket. Six marbles. I'm looking for marbles all day long.
safe and frank thermo folder here. Yeah. Put them in a B-29 over Japan. Do you know what you'd have? No, I don't, Doctor. You'd have Pulver, the Congressional Medal of Honor. Pulver, who single-handed shot down 23 attacking Japanese planes. Pulver, with his bare hands held together the severed wings struck this plane, let his bare feet successfully land the mortally wounded plane on his home field. Hell, it's a reflex. It's like the nature. Strike the patella tendon of any human being and you produce the nature. Look. <laughs> What's the matter, Doc? Well, nothing, but stay out of B-29, Strike. <laughs> <laughs> I'm figuring to get into this thing. And I'm going to keep on sending in letters until I do. That task force I saw last night was on its way to start our last big push against the Japanese. It went by me, Doc. I plan to catch it. I'm going to show him he's got old Frank Polar figured out all wrong. Ain't you? 
What do you mean by running disharmony aboard this ship? Well, because it's true, Captain. Any disharmony aboard this ship is my own doing. That's true, too, Captain. Damn right, it's true. Any criticism of the ship stays on this ship. I got a reputation with the Admiral, and I ain't gonna lose on a, a letter written by some smart out college officer. Now, you retype the letter, and leave off the disharmony crap. Captain, every man in the Navy has a right to send a request to transfer, and no one can change the wording. That's the Navy right. How about that, Dolan? That's what it says, sir. <laughs> this son of a bitch in Navy. I never took this crap when I was in emergency service. All right, send this one in. As it is, just some fruit, like I always do. One thing I ain't got to do, not to send any letters that ain't been written. I'm telling you here now, there ain't going to be any more. You write one next and you'll regret it for the rest of your life. You got a job right here, and you're going to stay. Where are your shirts? Yeah, I told shut up! Get those shirts on! They're in a big hurry! Captain, I said shut up! Get those shirts on! I'm sorry, put your shirts on. Who's the captain of this ship? That is the rankest piece of insubordination I have ever seen! You think you're pretty cute playing Grandmaster for rubbers, don't you? But now you've gone too far! I'm making you a little promise. I never forget this. In the meantime, every one of you men who has appeared on deck without a shirt and disobeyed my standing order is on report. Captain, you're not putting these men on report. What do you mean I'm not? I gave them permission. You disobeyed my order. Yes, it was so high working cargo. One man passed out. I don't give a damn. A 50 men passed out. I gave them an order and you disobeyed it. I smiled my orange and left that it. Did you get that LTT fresh fruit? Yes, Captain. They've been out for two months. We had some lunch. That's it. Get it. All the crap you're not going to. You just got your room. You got you just got yourself ten days in your room, mister. Ten days! Very well. Do you relieve me here? Damn right I relieve you here. Go to your room for ten days. Stay out like that. Way on you, Lieutenant. Not so long. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? <laughs> My room, Captain. Get back to that cargo. I'll let you know when you got your 10 days in your room. You'll damn well know it. You got a job right here and you're gonna stay. Get back to that cargo. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that there? Me, sir? Yes, you. Come here, boy. <laughs> I got one of my officers. What is your name? Ensign Officer. Glad to see that someone on this ship knows how to salute. Hold her, hold her. Oh, yes. How is it that I never see you around? Well, I've heard about that myself, sir. What is your job? Officer in charge of wandering around, sir. How long have you been aboard? Fourteen months, sir. <laughs> Fourteen months? You must spend a lot of time down in laundry, eh? Yes, sir. Most of my time, sir. <laughs> well, you do a good job. You know, I'd like to see more of you. How about lunch in my cafe today? Oh, I can't today, sir. Can't? Why not? Well, I'm on my way over to the hospital on the island to, to pick up a piece of uh, medical equipment. <laughs> That's right, Roberts. You finish here, then you go fetch it. Yes, sir. <laughs> How about it? Well, this is something I wouldn't want anyone else to do for me, sir. Maybe there's some other time. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, Paul. <laughs> Well, we said he'd fix you good. What do you think he'll do? You're up for promotion, aren't you? 
promotion? This is Mr. Roberts. You think he gives a good hoot about another lousy strike? Hey, Mr. Roberts, can I send that letter next week? Why, like hell you can. Well, that's my job, ain't it, Mr. Roberts? I'm afraid I promised that job stolen. You heard what he said. We gotta write a really hot one next week. That means his bestest favor. All right, let's give him the rest of his cargo.
Answer. No, yours. My? Many. Well, Manny, I'd advise you not to take that bed. Because you'd be out a hundred bucks.
walking up and down this street right here. Keep going. 
on the ship, and that's where you're gonna stay. Can't you hear that music? Get out of here. Some of the men can hear it too. God. Get out of here. What do you want for liberty, Captain? I want plenty. You're through writing letters for good. You're through giving me trouble. You're through talking back to me from the crew. You ain't even gonna open your mouth and lessen the civil answer. Is that all? No. Anyone know you're in here? No. Good. Then you won't come blabbing this to anyone anytime. It may not sound so good. Besides, I don't want you to get credit for getting this crew ashore. Credit? You think I'm doing this for credit? You think I'd let anyone know I was in here? I've got to be sure. You got my word, that's all. Your no word, your word, you college boys make a big deal about keeping your word. Oh God, is this a deal? Yeah, or not. <laughs> now hear this. Now hear this. This is the captain speaking. And I have some further word on the security conditions of this port. It gives me great pleasure to announce that Liberty, for the starboard section, for the entire crew, every single one. Correction, Liberty, for the entire crew, will commence immediately. Yeah! <laughs> Well, I'm due to get relieved here in 15 minutes. I'm glad to start a search party. No, sir, the arms 
going to take care of that. We're going to let you know what kind of punishment you're going to give these men. I'm sure our captain will think of a reasonable punishment. That's all we know. Man, sit on the next to the military police on account of this shit. Stop. Yeah, you do. I'm chicken milk. Well, I'll do this every day. Come on, fella.
took these guys to find a way to take a long, endless day to heaven. Because he's tired, that's why. He has a 
get lost last night. We found you back to us, get the handle off of the customer. I promise to go. Wait a minute, Mr. Robbins. Something comes to you in the mail this morning. Another love letter from the Bureau. Get a load of this. Small ships and stations. Titan's war offensive has created urgent need aboard combat ships for experienced officers. Huh? All commanding officers are hereby directed to forward with their endorsements all applications for transfer from officers with 24 months sea duty. You got 29 months. And you're the only officer aboard to have. Mr. Roberts, the old man is hanging on the ropes from the working over the admiral with him. All he needs to flatten is one more little jab. Here it is. The letter. I typed it up. Just sign your name and I'll take it into the captain. Come on, sign, Mr. Roberts. Take off like a bird. Yeah. What are you waiting for? Well, I want to look over it first. But there's nothing to look over. This is the same letter we wrote yesterday. Only quoting the new directive. Look, Dolan, I'm tired and I'm You ain't too tired it. to sign your name. Take it easy, Dolan. I'm not going to sign it. Take it easy. Let's get to work, all of you. What the hell? Come over here. Aye, aye, sir. For Christ's sake. Come on. Get going. Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> Doc. Hey, is Doug Stanley thinking about one of your promotions? Of course not. I doubt if he's even got to the love language. You say that again. I doubt if he's even got to the love language. <laughs> That's what I said. He's not even thinking of a promotion. All he thinks about is warning all day long, up in the radio shack, two weeks now, listening to the headsets and reading the board. And you always said he's fucking for another promotion. He's a dirty liar. He says he is, right? Insigna, Manion, so many other guys. I heard them talking outside the portal. They were talking long enough just on purpose, just so I could hear. They probably figured I was running my phone. Well, what's happened to, to Doug anyway, Doc? How would I know? He said about 10 words a minute during the day. But I'm damn well gonna find out. He won't speak, Doc. This morning, I called him all, all, all around the room while he was shaving. I said, you're a guy that looks like he needs a friend. So here I am. And then I said, what's all this trouble you have with the crew? Tell me and I'll fix it up just like that. I'm not getting some real good advice, Doc. I said, keep your chin up. And things like that. And you know what he did next? He walked right out of the room as if I wasn't here and I was here. Shit. You guys are 
one of the only ones interested in the war news. See you later, Doc. Doc, Prince William, who'll be sure not to on this next island? You can do it. You don't need the captain's approval. Yeah, sure. For examination, said there's something wrong with my eyes, my feet, my head, or something. Will you do it? Oh, sir, that's Will you? Morning. Will I run the hospital for a couple of weeks? The ship would have sailed. I'd have missed it. I'd be off this ship. Will you do it, Doc? Well, I won't be for a moment. I'm reporting now. Gave him an order. He didn't carry it out fast enough. Mercury. Is it 
more crash. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me how. I didn't realize I'm late for it. Avoid a blunder victory today, but the rest is up to you. You and you alone are setting eyes our enemy, the voices of ambition, cruelty, arrogance, and stupidity. You must recognize them. You must destroy them. You must tear them out as you would a magnificent rope and catch them from the surface of the earth. I'm 
some letters to send them. Now, that's right. It's true, Betty Frank. They were so busy thinking about themselves that they took a chance of landing in prison any one of them for five years. Since you couldn't send in a letter for Frank's birth, they sent one in for you. And since the news happened to be signed with Ruth, they didn't bother. They signed it for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, what if it's one of them did? Well, that would be hard to say. You see, they had a mass meeting down in the compartment. They put guards at every door. They called it the Captain's Name Sample Council. <laughs> and they found it. 167 of them signed the Captain's Name on a large sheet of paper. And then there were judges who compared these signatures with the captains and selected the ones away. At the time, there was some criticism of the decision on the grounds that the judges were drunk. Some of the results that showed them. Well, how did you find out about this? Well, it was a great honor. I am the only officer aboard the Reserve now. I was a contestant. I was also a judge. This double honor was accorded me because of my character, charm, good looks. And because the medical department contributed four gallons of grain alcohol to the conference. It's quite a thing to see that. Of the 167 guys with only one thought in their head, to do something for Mr. Roberts.
send us a cargo, Mr. Clover. No word on that movie, I suppose. Right, what is it? Mr. Roberts is dead. He's from Cornell. They took a jet suicide plane. They killed everyone in twin quarters battery. And they went out through and killed Doug, the other officer, in the wardroom. They're drinking coffee when they hit. Go get your mail. I'll stand by for you. Will? Gee, thanks, Mr. Clover. 